If there's one thing that I can take away from this winter season and all these late freezes that we've been having, it's that variety selection when it comes to fruit trees is critically important, both to whether or not you're going to receive a harvest later in the season and also how much input it's gonna require from you to have success. Now I was very much aware at the onset of this food forest install that I'd be experimenting quite a bit, whether it's two trees in one hole, general fruit tree spacing, variety selection, and what I was hoping is that I'd be able to share with you guys my experiences and help you to streamline your success and also over time hone into the design and get the most out of this landscape. And so far so good, I'm very happy with the way things are going. But what I wanted to talk about with you guys today is how you can make some decisions now, especially if you're just getting started uh, planting out your fruit trees and other perennials, so that you can have the most success with your design right off the bat. Generally speaking, stone fruit varieties are going to be the first to come out of dormancy. Peaches, plums, nectarines, apricots. Here we've got the Florida King peach tree. And I think we're doing well, even though we've gotten down to these freezing temperatures with the overhead irrigation technique that I employed. But I wanted to show you a difference here. We've got the Florida King peach tree, which started to erupt with bloom several weeks ago. And over here, I've got a Babcock white peach, and you can see most of the tree is still in the bud swell stage, just beginning to open up the flowers. So hypothetically, if I only had one fruit tree and I was growing a Babcock white peach rather than a Florida King peach, I would have had a lot less worries over the last few weeks as we've been dipping down to these lower temperatures. And that's because as the tree begins to bud out and the buds begin to swell, the pistil and the ovary are still very much protected. But once those buds begin to open up and the tree begins to flower, they become a lot more vulnerable to late season frost. So in other words, the Florida king peach tree blooms early, as where the Babcock white peach tree blooms a little later in the season. So there's a larger window of protection where you don't have to worry about those cold snaps. So at this point, if I were to recommend a low maintenance peach tree to grow for folks in my area, I'd say go ahead and try that Babcock white peach tree. It's also self fruitful, so it doesn't need another variety of peach to pollinate. And it requires very low chill hours under 300, below 45 degrees Fahrenheit. The next step would be to choose a very late blooming variety, something like the Canadian Harmony peach, which again is self-fruiting, just as with these other peach trees, and it does require a thousand chill hours, and that's another thing you're going to want to pay close attention to, is the chill requirement. Uh, if you don't hit that mark, you're not going to get a fruit set, so pay attention to that number and research that out before you choose your fruit tree to make sure that uh, your climate zone is going to match that requirement. With that being said, I also have several different varieties of fruit trees that are still completely dormant, meaning they're protected from these cold snaps. Here I've got a two-in-one planting of Commas Pear and Harrow Delight Pear. And here I've got a Fuji Apple, which is still completely dormant. And right next door we got a Honeycrisp Apple, totally dormant. Here we've got another two-in-one planting of pears. On the left we've got an Asian Pear, still completely dormant. On the right we've got a multi-grafted pear, one of those being a late Korean variety. And that one's already starting to break dormancy. There's some foliage and some flowers. So that one would benefit from some protection. Here I've got a black Tartarian cherry. And you can see we've got some bud swell, but the tree has not opened up any blossoms yet. So another good variety. Of course, my fig trees like this two-in-one brown turkey blackjack fig are still completely dormant and do very well in this area, as does the Peter's honey fig. There's also other varieties of fruit trees that I grow that are not affected at all or just mildly affected by these cold snaps. Here I've got a pineapple guava or a fahoa tree, and this tree is doing perfectly well. It's an evergreen and not affected whatsoever by these freezing temperatures. The Nagami kumquat citrus is another success story, doing very well despite these temperature fluctuations. The Valencia orange is another great cold hardy citrus tree. This one survived all the way down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit without any damage but I was doing some overhead watering irrigation, which iced the entire plant and helped protect it from that freeze. Unfortunately, a couple days later, I missed getting out here on time and we had gotten down to 29 without any protection and some of the tips did burn, but the tree's still very much alive. It still has a lot of nice green, fresh growth on it. But what that taught me is that spraying this tree down with water uh, when we did get down to 25 essentially did protect this variety. And although this Washington orange here is looking good and it did survive, it did have some damage from the last freeze. So this would be something to consider when looking at citrus. The pomegranate trees, and I've got two varieties, the wonderful and the white, both suffered some tip damage, the new tender growth that had occurred. 
had died back after we got down to those freezing temperatures. So time will tell if the tree rebounds this season and we get a harvest. My white mulberry tree is another one that started to break dormancy and was affected by those freezing temperatures. So we've got some burned tips on the tree, but there's still a lot of budding that still hasn't opened up. So I think this tree is gonna be just fine. The fruit trees that were in bloom during these freezing temperatures that came into the area and were targeted by the overhead irrigation system where we essentially iced the tree to combat any damage from those freezing temperatures fared very well. Here we're looking at a Santa Rosa plum tree and all of the blossoms on this tree have remained viable. Looking forward to a great fruit set on this tree. And same thing with this apricot tree here. This aprium on the other hand it's hard to know exactly where we're going to end up. Initially, the protection with that overhead watering did a great job and we had viable flowers remaining on the tree. Then a couple days later, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, I had gotten out here a little bit late to do my protecting and I noticed some of these flowers don't look so healthy. So we're going to have to give this one a little bit of time and see if we had success. And although the all-in-one almond lost some of its petals, the core of the flowers remain viable. So we're looking good here. The Florida King peach tree is also another one that fared well with the overhead irrigation and the blossoms have now matured a bit. So we're just waiting to see the next stage of growth, see if we get some little baby fruits on there, but it's looking good. Here's another Santa Rosa plum tree in full bloom, no damage to speak of. Again, I had to come out here last night and the night before and protect with overhead watering as we've continually dipped into those freezing temperatures. So variety selection, bloom time, chill hour requirements, those are three things you're going to want to pay close attention to. And I don't want this video to discourage you from trying to push the envelope either. Um, I think it's great to experiment. Discovering microclimates in your landscape or being proactive with protection techniques, whether it's overhead irrigation or covering your plants with frost blankets, it really does open up the possibilities. But really, the whole purpose of today's video was just to help inform so that you guys can make the best decision for yourself. So with that, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I hope you're having a great weekend, and I'll be talking to you again soon. Take care. <music>